After playing the new Smash Brothers, a lot of people felt something. Something other than immense joy. Do you know what it was? Do you feel it, Wolf? I'm reading it! I'm Input lag, obviously. But how bad is it? Are some controllers worse than others? Is everyone making it up to hide their subpar Smash skills? That's exactly what we're going to answer in this episode of Button to Pixel. This input lag's getting crazy. Let's rock. So in our last episode of Button to Pixel, we tested every controller for every version of Smash Brothers. We did over 520 tests to get those statistics, and today, we are benefiting from that. In today's episode, we'll only be looking at the best controllers per game in these graphs, so if you're interested in the differences between controllers and other such interesting details, then please go check out the prior episode of Button to Pixel. But you're wondering, how do we test the game's input lag? Well, I'm glad you asked. We film us pushing a button at 1200 frames per second, measure the time between the button being actuated and the game reacting, and then subtract the TV's input lag from that number. Thus, the TV doesn't affect it, so stop asking. We do this 30 times and then chart the lowest, highest, and average input lag for every setup. So, let's start with Smash Ultimate and what it looks like for every controller. As you can see, the controllers are all pretty close with the Pro Controller ranking the worst, Joy-Con ranking the second worst, and the GameCube adapter plugged into the side ports getting second best, and the best setup being the GameCube adapter hooked into our powered USB 3.0 hub, which itself is plugged into the back USB 3.0 port. If you're more curious about that whole setup, go check out our other video on this in the description below. If you look at the two GameCube controller results, the minimum and maximum lag are actually identical. It's entirely possible that due to random intra frame time sampling spots that the difference in average input latency, which is only 1.69 milliseconds anyways, comes down to a randomness of sampling bias and not a solid difference. Obviously, if you want a good responsive experience with Smash Ultimate, you should be playing on a GameCube controller. If you want a more convenient wireless experience, then the difference between the two isn't as bad as it could be, but maybe it's something you should consider. The problem is it the controllers, though? The problem is the game, but how bad is the problem? Well, uh, it's almost a frame worse than Brawl, which was the least responsive game in the series by about 7 milliseconds. It has approximately 6 whole frames of input lag. It's 21 milliseconds than Smash for Wii U, and yeah, that's 40 milliseconds worse than Melee. Melee fans are going to run an unending rampage on Reddit in my comments section. I mean, I'm a fan of Melee too, but I should not just be handing out knives like this, you know? Keep in mind with this chart that each vertical line represents a whole frame's worth of input latency, so that's more than two additional frames of lag between Melee and Ultimate. <sighs> that sucks. You know it's bad when people notice the input lag that quickly. Why would Nintendo do this? Well, I'm glad you asked. Games tend to deepen their rendering pipeline to add more graphics at a lower performance penalty. Such techniques like deferred rendering do so, and Smash Ultimate is a really gorgeous game. It's definitely pushing the Switch hardware very hard. Unfortunately, that additional input lag is affecting the gameplay, so it's definitely at a cost. Maybe they can lower this with patches, but I really wouldn't hold out for that. Nintendo's not really known to do that. Oh, and uh, I can hear all of you asking really weird questions like, I heard using this specific controller was better for online because it won't clog up the USB bandwidth, or this controller's better than that controller because of 5 gigahertz Wi-Fi, to which I reply, it's highly likely that's placebo. The online is in constant flux when it comes to input latency. I played several dozen matches last night, and even with the same people, it would wildly fluctuate how much artificial input lag was put in to compensate for network latency. Yeah, that's right, if you're unfamiliar with such ideas, games will often put artificial input latency in to help the network code cope with the latency between players. GGPO does this really well. Smash does it in a way that a really dumb person might not notice, but damn, it can really club you over the head with it. I feel like doing an analysis of the network code would be really interesting and important, but at the moment, I don't have the time or means to do so. 
Perhaps we can all harangue battle nonsense into doing it, and by harangue I mean ask politely and support him on Patreon. Anyway, thank you everyone for your support on Button to Pixel. It's a very time-consuming series to produce and kind of costly. Without your help, we wouldn't be able to keep doing it. Because man, is it monotonous work. But it's important. If you think the discussion of input lag is important in games media, then please support Button to Pixel on Patreon.com slash GigBoots. That's all for now, though. See you next time. This Gigaboots video was brought to you by the help of our executive producer, God Kings, Vincent Pover, Nicholas Cameron, E. Lee Broyles, Brendan O'Sullivan, Star Falcon, Spaceman Spiff, Danny Richardson, Dryzart, and Wardanis. Thanks, God Kings, and also these guys. Now, wait, okay, I thought it was a cave story song and now it's Kirby. What the fuck is going on here? Where do we keep getting these rips, Bob?